People will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. Isaiah 58, 12, NIV. Welcome to Outreach Connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and power of Jesus Christ. Well, welcome to Outreach Connection. It is a pleasure to have myself come into your home or wherever you're at watching the program here. My name is Gary Schluckebeer. I'm the host of Outreach Connection. We are, that's what we are exactly what we're doing. We're reaching out to those who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. But we're also reaching out to show you different programs, different ministries, all across in, in our area, not only that, all across the country and world as far as that goes too, to, uh, to show you that there is help out there. Well, today, I'm really excited about having my guest with me. It's Representative Lendo Shoemake. He is the uh, uh, representative from the Missouri di District of Five of the Shelby, Marion, and Monroe counties with it. And, and Representative, thank you so much for being mm -hmm. with me here today around the table. Pleasure to be here, Gary. And I know we've got some things to talk about. I, I tell you, I, you've just generated me here as we've talked a little bit and, I, and some of my prep work that I've done to, to see what you have done. And I'm just going to start right off with, uh, with your House Bill number 282 that you sponsored and everything and, and and just jump right in here and then let let's talk about that and and maybe some other things that you want to talk about too let's begin well house bill 282 is really a very simple bill when we say that down there people kind of chuckle you know because yeah. sometimes the simplest bills end up being complicated but basically what this bill says and we can read right from the text it says a bill uh, books of a religious nature may be used in the classroom as a part of instruction in elective courses in literature and history so long as such books are not used in a way so as to violate the establishment clause of the United States Constitution. Okay. Very simple, but I believe far-reaching. Okay, now talk to us about that a little bit. What is that saying? Basically, it's saying really what the fact really already is. And I'm sure you realize, along with a lot of people, that uh, our rights that we have as American citizens, oftentimes because of courts and things like this, have, well, it's been clouded. And sometimes our understanding of what we can and can't do mm -hmm. in um, public settings, such as, in settings such as public schools, are uh, influenced by news stories that we read and Kate court cases that have come okay. up and so forth. Mm -hmm. But basically, I'd like to begin the discussion of back when uh, things like prayer and Bible reading were, as we say, quote, taken, taken out, out of mm -hmm. public schools. 62, 63? 1963, Three. it was a Pennsylvania court case of Abington Township versus Shemp. And what happened during that time, uh, many of our older viewers out there will, will remember a time when you were in public school that in the, in the morning and school started, you had prayer, you had Bible reading, maybe the recitation of the Lord's Prayer, like that, and suddenly it stopped as a result of this case. Mm -hmm. Well, what this case actually did, it never was compulsory in the public school, even before that, for students to participate. They could always opt out. So you and I and the viewers of this program certainly would agree that this should never have happened in the first place mm -hmm. because no one was compelled to participate in it right and by mere by prayers and reading of bible recitation of script that's not the establishment that's not what the founding fathers were talking about when they were talking about the establishment mm -hmm. of reli religion in other words the, we were not to have a state religion that's what they meant by that amendment in our U.S. Constitution. Well, what people don't realize that with that case, the 
prayers really wasn't altogether taken out of the school. Mm -hmm. Neither was the use of the Bible taken out of our public schools. Okay. And people have the impression that prayers are taboo, the Bible yeah. is taboo, yeah, you did. can't bring it, you can't do anything. Yeah. If you do, you're going to be in big trouble and all of this. But really, it's never been the case. Okay. What that case did, that Supreme Court decision, um, agree with it or disagree with it, and, and I happen to disagree with it, but it took out the devotional use of the Bible and prayers state-sponsored prayers. It never took out the right of the student to pray. Uh, all this time a student could pray over their lunch. Uh, children okay. could gather together in the hallway and pray. Uh, they could pray at free times and um, use of facilities, uh, Bible clubs and things like this at mm -hmm. times in which uh, public instruction wasn't going on, uh, the facilities could be used and so forth. There, were, there was a court case about that, but it never really was removed. So this was a misnomer. I believe because of many cases. Because I, I understood it that, hey, you can't do that in school, you know, that's what I was understood. Right, and I <clears throat> kind of had that impression too till I really started looking into it and the, the genesis of it and as long as things are done in a certain way, um, with or without this legislation, now, this pertained to instruction in school, but um, uh, right now we're talking about uh, mostly prayer, um, it's really always been the right of the student to pray. But they because pray. I, I think what has happened, and, and you realize this as well as I, that that if the groups like the ACLU and other groups that oppose prayer, I mean, that a prayer is the establishment of religion is just, you know, to me that's just way out there, yeah, you know. Right. But uh, because of their efforts and because of the huge cost of litigation, rather than <clears throat> defend the right mm -hmm. to do so, a lot of just, a lot of uh, school districts across the country have just acquiesced, uh, yeah. just caved into it. Right. Uh, there was a case down in, in Missouri here recently, as a matter of fact, it was a uh, county uh, commissioners group mm -hmm. that were meeting and they opened with prayer and ACLU had a case against them in, in a certain county uh, in Missouri and they didn't back down. Okay. They just continue to do so and are still continuing to do so mm -hmm. and because they knew what their rights were and they didn't back down as a result. Well since then of course we've passed a constitutional amendment okay. in Missouri. And this is going to be, well, it'll already be passed by the time August 28th. August 28th is when the religious books amendment goes yeah. into effect. Now the uh, about prayer and uh, in school or in public places. Uh, this is written into our Constitution as of August 28 of last year. Okay. And actually I was elected first in 2010. I never held any public office yeah. before and I could say when you go down there with uh, in that situation it's like drinking from a fire hose, you know. <laughs> I imagine. It's, uh, uh, a lot to take in at once, but now I'm in my second term and I, I feel more comfortable with the process and so yeah. forth. But the first time. piece of legislation that I signed on was a, what's called a House Joint Resolution. And it'd been around for a while, this House Joint Resolution 2, uh, sponsored by one of my colleagues down there. We had about 44 co-sponsors and this was called the Prayer Amendment. Okay. And um, basically this put it out to the people. Um, by you can put you can because it was a change in constitution. This wasn't a statute. The, the religious books is statute. The prayer amendment that's the constitution. Now, this is literally a part of Missouri constitution okay. right here. And and I I did highlight some areas there that are of particular interest I believe to us. And um, but anyway, the part that changed there was the it put in writing in our Constitution, and again, this was another one of those things that, yeah, this is the way it is, but you got to spell it out these days. 
And um, so con consequently, that's what we did in Missouri. So, um, and to, to sum it up, it says that prayer it can be made in public places, in schools, in government offices, and as long as it's not done in a, in a disruptive manner. Mm -hmm. I, I remember I used, I was a state employee for 20 years uh, back a while ago, back, and, I, and when we had a, an event in, in the office, they would ask me to pray. And, well, because and I would. you are a minister, too. Yeah, they, they, yes, that's, that's uh, you so. Wear, you wear more than one hat. Yeah. And we're going to get to that in a minute, too, but that, go ahead. That is true. And, uh, but uh, sometimes I could uh, feel that not everybody liked it, you know. <laughs> but sometimes you have to go, you have to go forward that. anyway. Yes. But it's really always been the right of one to pray, as long as in, in public places, at graduation ceremonies and so forth, as long as it's not done in a disruptive manner. Uh, also a part of the uh, constitutional amendment was that students would not be compelled to, uh, they could include religious themes with, and they are not to be discriminated against in, in their writing and so forth. So if they're doing English assignment, they want to have a religious theme. Okay. They don't take off because, you know, they don't agree with the content of it, you know. Okay. Uh, religious content, no problem in, when it comes down to assignments in school. And also that students would not be compelled to participate in, uh, in assignments that violate their okay. uh, religious belief. Okay, so you had, getting started, a lot to learn. But, you know what? You know what, I'm sitting here thinking, and I know I think other people out there are thinking the same thing, that this is a God call thing. That you're not there just because you won an election. I think you're there for this reason to help to educate all of us. He's educating us to realize, hey, you can still pray. You can still, and we're going to talk about some Bible curriculum here in just a moment, which is quite awesome. And, uh, but that's what God does. You know, God, God is still on the throne, and regardless of what we hear, now this is for Missouri, but at the same time, it can happen in other states too. That's right. right. right? And there's really no reason why uh, someone in Illinois could not uh, contact our this, this organization here and uh, go to their local school board and, and do this. Uh, maybe it would make it easier if it was yeah. enshrined in statute here in Illinois, but still it's, it meets all of the qualifications and standards because right. it's, quote, it's not, what, what the case did back in 1963 is it took out the devotional uh, use of the Bible and and state sanctioned okay. prayer. It never did remove the academic study of the Bible. Okay. It has always been legal for the academic study of the Bible and in public schools. And when you think about this, how can you study anything in in school, whether it's high school level or and not have some reference yeah. Yeah. to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Because when you study English literature, if you study American history, if you study art, um, it's all there. Yeah. The influence of the Bible on Western civilization is undeniable. Amen. And to study all of that without studying the source document, right. to me, is doing a disservice to the students out there. Well, United States of America, the textbook in the schools was the Bible. You yes. Know, when, our, when our forefathers, when our pilgrims uh, um, and national leaders to form the Constitution, how many times God is mentioned in our Constitution? It's the Word of God. Now, let's talk about this curriculum, the National Council on Bible Curriculum in Public Schools. Um, I, I pulled down some, did, trying to do my prep work here a little bit, and uh, about the Bible in history and literature curriculum. Yes. Talk to us about that a little well, bit. Well, we didn't mandate. Got that the, on the screen there right now. Uh, the, the law was just what I read, the statute that goes into effect 28th day of August 2013. <clears throat> it. Uh, 
said that you can do this, but it didn't mandate that, that public schools do this. It's not a mandate. And it's better that we do it this way, mm -hmm. that the local school boards, I, I do believe in local control, and I do believe that those local school boards and the parents should get together and decide things like curriculum that they need and so forth that particularly serve their area. And so it's up to them to, to uh, incorporate a curriculum such as this. And so I was searching out for what would be a, a good curriculum for public schools, just to supply information to the uh, public schools of our state. And, and there's no reason why another state, this is in 38 right, states right, right now. Right. And about 600,000 students have taken this yeah. curriculum. And I came across the National Council on Bible Curriculum in Public Schools. And I've been in contact with them and they sent me a copy of their material which I looked over and this is good stuff. This is not a Mickey Mouse curriculum. Mm -hmm. It is good. It's, it's got uh, CDs, it's videos, slides, smart board application, test, activities, and there's more things in here that, that a teacher can use and, than they can get in in the whole semester of study. And it meets all of the guidelines. I mean, lawyers have gone over this. It's been vetted. It meets all of the guidelines for use in public schools. Yeah, doesn't nice. violate anything in our Constitution uh, for use of this material. And so I, I, went, I got in contact. I was talking to the president of the, the board of the National Council on Bible Curriculum in public schools, and she told me that with my endorsement, she will supply this Get this, get this free. Free. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how they do it, uh, but they will supply it free to any and all public school districts in the state of Missouri, both teacher Fantastic. and uh, student yeah. material, and with along with my letter of endorsement. So we have a. I think it's about 566, if I get the number right, mm -hmm. uh, school districts in the state of Missouri. And uh, my office, we're contacting them, and we're just letting them know you can do this and how to get a hold of the National Council of Bible Curriculum in Public Schools and how to secure this uh, for your own school district. Yeah. And I think that uh, parents out there, too, should take note of this because I, I believe it's time that parents start taking over uh, and that... Okay. We're supposed to be a nation of the people, by the people, and for the people. And what we're seeing is people are concerned because they're seeing our republic slip away because yes. it look, it's looking more and more like we're a top-down yeah. government. And we're not a, a dictatorship here. We're supposed to be of the people, by the people, and for the people. And the people out there can have a lot more influence than what they think, and I believe they're beginning to realize this too. And you know what, Representative, you can't, every, I've been reading in the, in the Bible and going through the Bible in my one year Bible study of in, in Kings and Chronicles. And when they, the people forgot God and they quit calling on God, God would back off. Or God said, if you abandon me, I'll abandon you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, 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 a, in a way, I just want to say that's, that's part of America's problem. We have backed off from God. And I'm glad to see the effort being put back in or come to the realization, hey, we can still pray in school. Or, hey, there is a Bible curriculum that can be put into the schools. And not only that, for homeschoolers. You know, the, the parents can, it would probably be free for them too. I, I think that uh, the information is there. Yeah. Call and talk. They, they yeah. said that any, I'm sure that they would supply it to homeschoolers too yeah. as well. Uh, it's basically a high school level subject, but I believe that some uh, middle schools could possibly okay. use this literature also as well, this curriculum. And um, it, it's, it's very good. And, and, and granted, this is history and literature. Now, we have a lot of denominations out there. Yes. And so th is, this is not teaching religion per se, right. but it's teaching what the history and, and literature from the Bible. The Bible. Um, yes. And I, there's not a better book out there to give accurate yeah. 
uh, and revisionist history, I could go off on that one too, you know. <laughs> but uh, when, this is not revisionist history. This is the way that it was. Yes. And, right. and the way that it is and the way that it will be, yes. yeah. you know. And uh, so, uh, and I, I think that uh, that's what our students need. And, you know, the doctrinal and the devotional aspect of the Bible, well, they're going to get that in their churches. But when you think about it, I, I thought about this, a lot of churches are limited in time. Yeah. What they meet Sunday, meet Wednesday, meet other right. times during the week. Right. How long would it take to do a course on the history, a Bible history course? Fantastic. It would, Good it would idea. take years for a yeah. church to do that. Yeah. And for a, a child, and, and this is going to help with other things like English and art and other areas of literature. I mean, Shakespeare, I mean, yeah. the many, the English in English literature, American literature, there's, it's so full of yeah. Bible quotations. But okay, you, you, yeah. you study it from that standpoint, but what about where it came from in the first place? And yeah. phrases that we use in our modern language, too, that came from the Bible. I wash my hands, I'm washing my hands of this. Well, where did that come from? It came from the Bible, but people yeah. don't realize right. that if they right. have That's no good. Yeah. association. And also, there should no denomination. Uh, this particular curriculum be concerned about this. It even there's even a lesson in there about the apocrypha, too, as well that between the testaments, and uh, the, it gives the whole story about okay. about the apocrypha. So it's jam packed so, full. Oh yes, yeah. it, it, it's a it's a very good. <clears throat> yeah, and and I like and you you'd brought this up, um, but to date our the Bible curriculum here that we're talking about has been. Um, voted into 776 school districts, 2,377 high schools in 38 states, and over 550,000 5, students have already taken this course nationwide on school, high school campuses uh, during school hours for credit. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's building steam, has got a lot of credibility, Yes. With it and everything. Some and, of the credibility uh, comes from the uh, people that are on the uh, board of directors yes. and on the advisory some board. Of those up. That's and right. here's just a few names of people that are on the. Uh, here's the board of directors Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Chuck Norris and Mr. Ben Kinslow are mm -hmm. three that are on the board of director, directors. And on the advisory board, uh, we find uh, uh, before his uh, going on to be with the Lord, Dr. James Kennedy mm -hmm. was one, and Dr. Charles Stanley, uh, Mrs. Joyce Meyer, David Barton. I don't Dave. think there's anybody in the country that knows more about oh, American history his than history David yeah. Barton. Uh, Dave Reaver, Andre Crouch, yep. mm -hmm. and uh, also the uh, uh, Billy Graham's daughter uh, was also one and Dr. Alveda King she came to Hannibal a while back and mm -hmm. she's the niece of Dr. Martin, Martin Luther, Luther King. King she is mm -hmm. very much involved with the pro-life mm -hmm. movement and all these are on the advisory board yeah. and uh, so uh, there's some very knowledgeable yes. people and and the most important thing in a curriculum such as this for the purpose is that it be historically accurate mm -hmm. and says how it is because it's a history course mm -hmm. and right. and, lit and right. with the literature and so forth. There's things in there about art. It's just it's just a great curriculum. Yeah, I um, would love to get it myself. <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the teacher's companion guide here, all the information and, and all the material that you need is uh, is here for this. And I tell you, it's, it is awesome. It is it is exciting to uh, be able to um, hear about this. And uh, it's exciting to know that, and, and here it is, here we've got it, uh, what the front of the book, I love the picture. In fact, I downloaded the picture just on a piece of paper. Yeah, you know, okay. and, and, uh, but uh, here's the, the book, the teacher's manual book here, and this is what it would look like when you order that and, and, and uh, get it. And we've had the, the order number and everything up on the screen there before. So uh, I tell you, that it's, that's exciting. Um, 
God's still on the throne. Absolutely. I am, I am so impressed. I'm going to just say one more time, uh, Representative, you wear many hats because you're with uh, God's, harvesters God's Harvesters down in Hannibal yes. and uh, with going into prisons and everything and helping to lead people to the Lord, to find Christ, um, to be able to get their lives back together, which you have seen over the years. I, you've yes. been with them many years, haven't since, you? Uh, I've been involved in prison and jail ministry since 1976 yeah. and still am today. And yeah. right now we're, in our, uh, we're out of session, and so I'm pretty much free to minister, yeah. and I get all in I can when we're out of yeah. all the ministry I can when we're out of session. And even when we're in session on weekends, um, but when we're when we're in session, our, our regular services are during the week, and so I have to depend on the rest of the team to yeah. take care of business. And you were just here on Channel 16, just on Pastor Speak. Yes. And uh, uh, if if you watch that, you can find out what kind of a preacher man <laughs> he is too. You know, uh, once a preacher, always a preacher. I don't care if you get voted into the House of Representatives. That's right. You know, we have um, a couple of two or three representatives that are current pastors of wow. churches now. Fantastic. Right we have a couple there. of doctors and we have so various professions. You there. probably have prayer meetings. We do. Uh, every, when we're in session, mm -hmm. every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m., mm -hmm. we have a Bible study and it's uh, sponsored by a group called the Capital Commission. That's what they do. They minister to uh, legislators primarily. Okay. 7 a.m. in the morning, pretty early, uh, right there in the the busy part of the week, legislative week, when we're there, and we have uh, at least about 35 mostly House members that come, um, a senator or so, and even a Supreme Court uh, yeah. Justice, Missouri Supreme Court yeah. Justice has been one of our uh, uh, attendees there too as well, and some staff. Fantastic, fantastic. Hey. Aren't you glad we've got some representatives? He's from Missouri. I would, he needs to be in the, our nation. That's where he needs to be. This is the book. It's the Bible. Um, I encourage you, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, ask for forgiveness of sins. Ask Him to come into your heart, and He'll take control. And then start reading the Bible. Most everybody has the Word of God or the Bible. And if not, there's plenty of stores where you can buy one. And highly, we, we need to be in the Word of God. You need to get this seed into you. Well, I'll tell you what, this has been a fantastic, exciting, informational program for me. And I am glad that you have joined us. Maybe you can tell somebody else <clears throat> out there in uh, your world, uh, hey, turn on uh, Outreach Connection. I'm Gary Schluckaberry, your host. God bless you for joining us. And Representative... We're going to be in prayer for you. God bless you for Thank joining you so me much. around the table here. A real pleasure, Gary. so much. God bless. Thank you. You've been watching Outreach Connection. If you would like to contact this ministry, you may write Outreach Connection, care of CTN, WTJR, 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois, 62301. This week on Community Calendar. Special services with Yusama Dadok, Muslim Evangelism Specialist. Sunday, September 8th, 1045 a.m. and 6 p.m. And Monday, September 9th through Friday, September 13th, 6 p.m. nightly. Revealing the truth about Islam, infiltration of Islam in America at Antioch Baptist Church, 59621 Antioch Lane in Hannibal, Missouri.